Today, I will be talking about Gregory Bryce. What's up everybody it's your girl be octavia welcome to my channel welcome to a whole new week hopefully everybody here is feeling great better days are to come so today is tuesday it's real talk tuesday well, in real talk tuesday we will talk about people that either impacted society in a positive or negative way we will be talking about the decisions they made, but also what we can learn from it. Now, before I get into that, let me just tell you that I am a mom of an almost four-year-old. She will be four in May. And I'm also an entrepreneur. I will be pushing my products more because starting this week and the, the date that I'm going to drop my second business will be listed right here because I have to make that decision on when I'm going to launch my business. Starting this week, I will be a business owner of two. So I definitely want y'all to check out either the skincare and cosmetics or check out the clothing brand that I have created. If you looking at me as an investment, invest, you know, invest in the future of what Crush On You Beauty could be, invest in the future of what Be The Brand can be, and most importantly, invest in me. If you want me to take it to a whole new level, if you want new heights and new environments and everything like that, contribute. Now, today we will be talking about a requested person. And I just want to say thank you to him because people ain't going to talk about everybody. You know, people not going to talk about everybody because in a lot of people's eyes, everybody don't matter. It's about the ones that did all of this shit and all of that shit. All of... And not about the people that made small but significant marks on the district today i will be talking about gregory bryce um, let's get into mr bryce and also get into why we're even discussing his name why his name is important or significant for positive or negative and if it's some deeper conspiracies up in here right so, Gregory Bryce is from Southeast D.C. He was raised by his grandmother, and he was hugely affected by violence at a very young age. He witnessed his mother being stabbed to death by a boyfriend when he was only four years old. So, just imagine how much trauma it is to not only lose your mother and not have a mother anymore, but also to see her get killed that's a lot for a four-year-old to process dc police say that gregory bryce went on a killing spree um, allegedly killing four people by the time he was stopped by prosecutors they alleged that he killed four people so within 72 hours police had bryce's name for the first murder right within weeks police were convinced that he actually was involved and responsible but they failed to apprehend him whether they couldn't get a fixed address on him or they really didn't try hard enough over the next few years the killings continue continue to unfold with police making no movement getting information from prosecutors police and the judges let and allowed a vast number of killers to keep killing this issue within the judicial system was not uncommon for the district as a lot of detectives would only do the bare minimum of what they had to do no more than that in a analysis by the washington post washington dc reported 3900 homicides 
in the district over the past decade. And they found almost 300 of those slangs allegedly were committed by people who were already on police radar. And they were already on police radar because police believed that they had killed before. But again, no action, no movement, right? Crimes like this are called ladder crimes. These crimes especially show the lack of work that police detectives want to do. And it shows law enforcement's failure to lock up alleged killers. And it also showed that they can't even protect the innocent people, you know? Another Washington Post study showed critical weaknesses in the investigator's ability to solve slangs. It exposed a pattern of missing homicide case files, incomplete investigations, and poor record keeping. As a result, in the district, killers, killers were able to repeat offenses and very serious offenses such as murder. And for many reasons, including Number one, the evidence that police collected in the first case was insufficient to make an arrest. Number two, prosecutors dismiss cases on the grounds of them being too weak to stand trial. To stand trial and to win trial, okay? And number three, and the most important thing, the judges of the district judicial system they was getting aggravated with delays and they simply released these alleged killers um, homicide detectives police investigators etc it really fell hugely on them that um, a lot of the cases weren't turning out the way that it should have turned out for alleged killers so right now we are going to get back into gregory bryce jr's story gregory bryce jr's journey through the judicial system began in 1992. um he was a teenager at the time and he was charged as an adult with attempted murder and this attempted murder charge stemmed from a situation where he allegedly shot a neighborhood boy in the legs he pleaded guilty to a lesser offense and by the time prosecutors were no longer able to locate the victim they dropped these charges in january of 1994. seven months later bryce allegedly pulled the trigger again this time allegedly shooting 18 year old daryl barnes who ironically served time in juvenile with gregory bryce so they were very familiar with each other barnes had moved moved away from from his southeast dc neighborhood to maryland with his mother and as it goes you know because it's still like that today where you'll move out but you still clinging on to the vibes of the neighborhood and shit like that, you know? So that's the position that Daryl was in. He still wanted to keep the same friends, so he decided to keep going back and forth, you know? He would leave the house, go to Southeast, and then come home. Well, one night he did not come home. After waiting at home, his mother she became restless and out of nowhere she got a call from a friend of daryl's saying that he had been shot now off the rip the mom did not believe it you know she was like nah this must be the wrong number whatever whatever but the friend told her that he was serious and he knows because he closed his eyes. He closed Daryl Barnes' eyes. So, you not only saying that he got shot, you saying that he's dead. Right? That's a lot to process over the phone. Especially if 
the police is not making that call but you know maybe daryl barnes friend just as young as him or maybe even younger he don't know how to say it you know she rushed to 8th street southeast off the rip she knew that it was her son laying on the pavement he was laying face down with his head in a pool of blood within a day police receive a anonymous call that little greg had killed daryl barnes after police spoke to several informants they relayed the message that little greg is gregory bryce now before i end this and go on to part two what i want to say is what I'm noticing from homicide investigations in the district as I read on and read on, it's not a secret that police really rely on witnesses and they really rely on their informants. They rely on that so much that they have no other evidence. There, there isn't any talks of him being linked to this scene no dna i'm not seeing any type of way that you can really physically put him there other than if he says that he was in that area now what if you have witnesses and informants that are lying to you and what if they are all in cahoots together See, the police never think about no shit like that, and that really bugs me. It bugs me because if that's all you got, that's not good enough. But as we talk about all of the alleged killers that were not caught in time, we are going to talk about the lack of evidence in a lot of these young men's cases. I'm not saying that they wasn't guilty of doing bad shit when they was young, when they was young adults. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying if you don't have a, a, a vast amount of physical evidence, it's not really much I can believe in that. Because you telling me to take a person's word for it that you know. Who's to say that you're not telling the witness what to say so they can say it for the case to be closed. I see huge errors in this, but we are going to get into that in part two. It's your girl, B. Octavia. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see y'all in my next video. Make sure that you be on the lookout for Be The Brand. Make sure that you support Crush On You Beauty. And I will see y'all in my next video.